Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today we are heading over to the Kyoto driving park for our next world circuit race. Before we do that, I'm just going to dive into the options and make sure that we are on the hard race difficulty, which we are. We'll then head over to Kyoto and hopefully a less wet race than the two that we've had more recently at Fuji. They were pretty wet and we needed some strategy involved. Hopefully this Vision GT race is going to be a little bit drier and a little bit more straightforward. So we're going to pick the McLaren VGT with medium racing tyres. You can see there the suspension and differential settings that I am using. The output adjustment of 70, ballast to zero and the power restrictor of 70 just to bring the performance points down to 850. Otherwise, you can see on the screen the other settings that we have chosen. This is a PP limited race, so that was a reason for the 850. So this is seven laps of the Querito driving park in which we've got to go from last to first. And we are just going to have to absolutely go for it around this track. But be careful because this is the scene of my biggest ever accident which I did some months ago and I have actually got a video on the channel. So I've got the track map up because we haven't run this track for a while. This is the area where I really had that bad accident. So I'm just being a little bit careful on the curbs through here. Managed to overtake two cars already. This McLaren is super, super quick. And as we come down here, we're just gonna sweep around the outside of the Mercedes. I absolutely adore this track. Really, really fast sweeping curves but some sections where you really need to get it slowed down. Up into 10th place already. This McLaren is super fast compared to the other cars. It looks like the AI have got their brakes on around this particular track. Either that or we've decided to strap a jet engine onto the back of our McLaren. We're up to 9th place already and this is only lap one of seven this is one of the areas where i need to be a little bit careful just getting it slowed down for this one the amount of times i run over that curb and into the wall i'm not going to admit to but far too many so as we come around to start a new lap i'm going to try and just take you through some of my braking points and gears but it will be a case of just rewinding and slowing down a video to have a look but we're going to break just the beginning of that curve down into fourth gear feather the accelerator all the way around here overtaking those two cars on the outside up through the gears just catching each of these apexes just be very very careful not to go too far over otherwise you could pick your car up and absolutely throw it through the air just braking at the beginning of that curb as well the beginning of the curbs really were my friend through here Fifth gear, you can carry loads and loads of speed through that corner. As we come down the hill, again, we're watching for the beginning of the curb, braking at the beginning of the curb, looking for that apex, sweep across to this apex, taking loads of it, including the grass, over that curb as well, and then up through the gears and just letting this car absolutely run. It loves this track. On that one, you're looking for the numbers in the road. Whether you brake at the beginning of the numbers or at the end, that is entirely up to you. Depends how good you are on the brakes. Down into third gear for this one. Just getting it slowed down, watching the apexes thread your way through there. And then up through the gears, down into second gear for this tight, tight final corner. Just picking up the apex on the back of the Porsche here. And the Porsche is going to run away from us. That Porsche is super, super fast in a straight line. So we'll just tuck in behind there to pick up a little bit of a slipstream. And then we will close up under braking. We get our opportunity as the Porsche goes wide. We've then got, I think this is a Jaguar in front of us. Is, is that the Jaguar again? And another really fast car, car. That air brake is monstrous. You really, really need to be aware of that Jaguar if you are following it because it will brake a lot later than you think it's going to break and when that air brake goes up it stops on a sixpence you need to be aware of your braking points and watch for your braking points and stick to those don't be sucked in by that jaguar so we are now into first place 
halfway round lap number three. That is how quick this car is. And that's my first mistake. Got onto the grass there, managed to keep it in a straight line, gathered it up, and then we just get ourselves settled down. Second gear for that corner, just to run around the curb up into third, up into fourth. We're going to come down at third for this one, pick up that curb, just touch that curb on the way through, let it drift out to the curb on the outside. If you've got the right amount of speed and gear for that one, the car will find that curb anyway, down into second gear for this last corner, and then it's a straight run to the line and to find ourselves over four seconds ahead of the second place runner. So again, fourth gear through here, just getting up on the curb, just using that curb all the way around that particular corner. Now we're looking for these apexes. If you want to go and see my worst accident ever, um, go and check out the video. I did a short on it and also a full video. Basically, I, I was coming through that little S section. I must have just caught a wheel on the outside of the curb and it flipped the car up in the air and I did a 360 vertically and horizontally to then hit the um, catch netting which threw me back onto the track on my wheels and I carried on. It was quite amazing. The biggest accident I've ever had in Gran Turismo in I think all of the versions. Anyway, back to this race. So I'm just braking now. Um, I'm choosing to brake at the beginning of those letters for that, uh, that corner. Again, finding a little bit more confidence in the car, so braking a little bit later and getting down into third gear a little bit later through that little chicane area. Through here, braking around about the 50, looking for that white curb, just picking that up, getting it rotated round in second gear, and we're coming up to the line to finish lap number four. So three laps to run. No worries whatsoever on the fuel. All of our battery has been used, but I really didn't worry about uh, charging the battery up or anything like that. I was really, really just going for it and just pushing around this particular track. Where are we at the moment? We are eight and a half seconds ahead of Yamanaka in second. So a nice margin to the cars behind. We have got the fastest lap, a 126.1, and our laps have been you know, relatively consistent. Not brilliantly consistent, but we've got a 126, a 128, and a 127. Consistency would be a little bit better. Uh, in particular, now that we are in clean air, I would like to be seeing low 127s being posted. Uh, we'll see what we get on this particular lap. And in fact, we are approaching a back marker, would you believe? Just looking at the map in the top right hand corner. Yes, I am narrating this after the race. I did want to concentrate on this one because I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it has proven to be. But as we are closing out this particular race now, we I feel as if we're getting quicker and quicker all of the time. Obviously no benefit of slipstream from anybody in that particular lap. Um, so we've got a 128.6, a little bit disappointing for that particular lap. I would have preferred to be in the 127s. So maybe I just decided to back off a little bit, threw it up the inside on that car. That was a bit audacious. That, uh, that gap was closing and we did manage to use a lot of the curb and get through there so job done fifth gear through this long long corner carrying as much speed as we can through there as we go over the top the car gets light slowing it down at the beginning of the curb turning in over this corner using the curb there as well or just got a little bit of a slide through the corner that's going to cost us a tenth or two we could have done without that, but still pushing on, even though we are 13 seconds ahead. I still only really know one way to drive in Gran Turismo, and that is flat out. Sometimes you just don't need to do it. Sometimes you can just rein it back in, slow it down ever so slightly, and just taking it a little bit more easy. I just don't seem to know how to do that. In fact, 
when I do that, very often when I back up, as happens in real life, to be fair, is when I then sometimes make silly mistakes. So I do tend to just try and keep pushing and just keep the rhythm, keep the muscle memory going and just use that throughout the race. So as we come around into the S's again, we're on a 129 on the last one, so it does look like I did actually decide to back off a little bit. 13 seconds ahead of the car behind, so again, no real reason to carry on pushing. Just breaking through there to, to start with, and just accelerating, just accelerating through the latter part of that corner. So we come down the hill, just continuing to push, looking for the apexes where we can. Just pushing on. Really, this is looking all very, very, very easy right now. 16.7 seconds ahead of the car behind. This has actually been a very, very lonely race, in actual fact. Uh, for you watching, probably decidedly boring. I can imagine that most of you are just going to look at the intro, look at the car set up, the first lap, and then just jump to the end, if I'm perfectly honest, because Nothing really to report on this one. As we're coming up to finish the race, to take the checkered flag, we're going to be 17, 18, 18 seconds ahead of the car behind for a super, super easy win in this beautiful McLaren VGT that I absolutely love. Look at that. 18 and a half seconds ahead of the Jaguar, 21 and a half ahead of the Porsche. Really easy. We've got a lovely, nice clean race bonus as well for that one. So 135,000 credits. The clean race bonus was unexpected, so a nice surprise. It is nice when that happens. These videos are all about getting the gold trophy more than the clean race bonuses. So when you do get them, it's so, so, so nice. But that was my car of choice and my car setup for this particular race. It was just a case of putting the uh, setup, the tires, and then just going for it. No real strategy. No pit stops, just a straightforward sprint to the end. Very, very straightforward. And if you found this video useful, then please hit the like button. If you found it at all entertaining, bear in mind it was a pretty boring race, uh, please hit the like button because it really does help the channel. And if you are new around here, please consider hitting the subscribe button because that will really help me as well. And if you are a current subscriber back for more, thank you ever so much for continuing to support me. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, well, with that, I'm going to disappear, run the next race and get that video ready for you for tomorrow. So hopefully I will see you on that video then. For now, take care. Bye bye.